Welcome back to the Avatar series right here at Comic Story and the number one place for your dramatic readings of your favorite comic books. I'm your narrator Dan and today we're going to be concluding Avatar The Last Airbender in Balance Part 3. Everyone stands in shock at what Toph just said. Why'd the rune get quiet all of a sudden? She asks simply. Katara comes down, shocked that Toph would even suggest taking away Li Ling's bending abilities. But Toph explains that it makes perfect sense. Li Ling has attacked her father's factory and the non-benders of Cranefish Town. She can't lead a bunch of bender supremacists if she's not a bender anymore, Toph explains. Katara glares at Toph, and the young earthbender asks why Katara would be so mad at the suggestion. It's removing a part of who they are. It's not a decision to be made lightly, Katara tells her. Suki and Sokka chime in, telling Aang that the other benders of the city might be upset that Aang took it upon himself to take away Li Ling's bending. Everyone looks to him for an answer, but Aang just begins to walk towards Li Ling's cell. I'm going to talk to Li Ling. She might be willing to tell her followers to stop their attacks, he tells the group. Talk all you want. That lady isn't changing her mind, Toph calls to him. Aang sits before the cell. Li Ling speaks to him kindly enough, and Aang asks her what he can do to resolve the conflict between the benders and the non-benders. She smiles at him, thinking that it's sweet that he continues to cling to the non-violent ways of the air nomads. You even refused to take the life of the tyrant Fire Lord, even as he was attempting to burn the Earth Kingdom to the ground. Aang nods, reminding her that he did spare Ozai's life and save the Earth Kingdom. I'll find a way to resolve this conflict peacefully as well, Aang tells her. But Li Ling becomes angry, telling Aang that she knows what he did to Ozai and that a life without bending is not worth living. At their home, Ya Ling and Ru sit together. Ya Ling floats a pile of rocks in her hands, confident that her earthbending has returned. Time to go get mom, she says. Ru knows where they are keeping her and suggests that they sneak into the earthen fire refinery that night, but Ya Ling shakes her head. They need to draw Team Avatar away, and she believes she knows how. Whatever it takes, she hisses. Yeah, whatever it takes, Rue repeats hesitantly. Outside the refinery, Aang finds Katara. As she has done so many times with him, he asks her what's the matter. Katara explains that she doesn't agree with Toph's suggestion that taking away someone's bending is the non-violent solution. But really, you're destroying a part of someone. That seems pretty violent to me, she tells him. Do Li Ling's crimes fit this punishment? Does she deserve to lose a piece of her identity? She asks Aang. They sit in silence for a few moments, with Aang having no answer. Their silence is broken as Sataru comes running over, telling them that the business council is under attack. The group rushes to the council building, finding it on fire. Sataru explains that Lao and the non-bending members of the council were inside for a meeting and Toph doesn't hesitate, launching herself forward. I'm going in to get my dad. You guys put out the fire, she shouts to Aang and Katara. Aang and Katara combine their water bending and air bending to start putting out the fire while Toph easily breaks down the door and gets all the council members outside. What was the point of this attack? Benders just set the building on fire and then took off? Aang questions as they put the last of the flames out. At the Earthen Fire Refinery, Lao's guards shout for Suki and Sokka to warn the Avatar that a fight is coming. Ya Ling steps forward with her gang of benders, laughing that they left all the non-benders to guard her mom. Let's show them that they're nothing compared to us, she smirks. Ya Ling and her gang rush forward, with the Earthbender targeting Suki. Remember me? she asks, rushing forward. Sure, didn't Toph beat you up? Suki taunts. The benders quickly separate Sokka and Suki from the rest of the security guards. Suki manages to use her shield to block the rocks that Ya Ling throws, but the pair is quickly trapped by Ya Ling's earthbending. Now stay put, Ya Ling laughs. One of the security guards tries to stop her, but his club and shield are no match 
and he is quickly knocked down. Ya Ling retrieves the man's keys, quickly moving into the refinery and unlocking her mother's cell. The two hug, with Li Ling smiling. I knew you'd find a way to free me. Let's go home. We have a lot of work to do, she tells her daughter. By the time Team Avatar returns to the refinery, they only find the damage caused by the fight. Sokka, Suki, and the guards continue to patch up their wounds and bruises. Now we know what the business council attack was really about, Aang sighs. Katara moves forward to heal the head of the guards, and he notes that while they are well trained and have fought benders before, the mob completely overwhelmed us. Katara nods, frustrated that Li Ling always seems to be one step ahead of them, and the head of security nods and asks her a favor. Your friend, the Kyoshi warrior, do you think she'd teach my officers to chi block? Later, Suki and Katara approach their friends, and Katara explains that they want to be ready the next time that Li Ling's forces attack. I'm going to teach Lao's guards how to chi block, Suki explains. She knows that it'll take longer than one night to teach them, but at least they can get started on the basics. Okay, we'll need all the help we can get, Aang admits. At Li Ling's home, the former councilwoman enters to find Rue. Her daughter is happy to see their mother, showing her that she has already begun packing so that they can escape. We are not going anywhere. Li Ling tells her daughter, refusing to leave in the night like they did when they fled Ba Sing Se. She becomes angry, questioning Ru on if she remembers what it was like to flee the city, why they had to, why it was so easy for the Fire Nation to infiltrate the Earth Kingdom. Because the Earth King was a non-bender, Ru whispers. Li Ling nods, telling her that she won't allow non-benders to ruin the life they have built in Cranefish Town. We're staying here. We're fighting for our home, she concludes. Rue suddenly becomes angry though, asking if her mother sees her as weak because she doesn't have bending abilities. Li Ling looks at her daughter, putting her hands on her shoulders. Rue, you must understand, I love you. I love you as much as your sister, but this is how the world works. Benders are powerful and non-benders aren't. It's just how things are. And it's best for non-benders to recognize that, she tells her daughter. She tells her daughter to unpack their bags, that she will be taking a group in the morning to force the Avatar out. And with these words, she leaves her daughter in the hall. At the refinery, Suki watches as the security force continues through the training motions that she showed them. Aang and Sokka watch, discussing what they should do next. Aang is angry, believing that it was these machines that led to all the problems in the cities. But Sokka tells him that the machines didn't cause the fighting. If anything, it made the benders and non-benders equal for once. Just like it wasn't the steamships or tanks that made the Fire Nation go to war. You have to blame it on the benders running around, burning buildings, and attacking non-benders, Sokka explains. And Aang finally agrees, knowing that Sokka is right. He leaves his friend, planning on turning in for the night. But as Suki leaves her training, Sokka senses someone watching them. And Suki and Sokka peer around the corner, finding Ru trying to slip away. Ru? Is there something you came here to tell us? Sokka calls her, and the young girl stops. I keep thinking about what you said to me in the cavern. How can I be okay with what my mom is doing? I love my mom and my sister, but the way they talk, the way they do things, I'm not okay with it. But they're my only family. How could I turn against them? She says, turning back. Suki smiles, knowing that Ru wouldn't be here if she didn't believe what her family was doing was wrong. Sokka agrees, telling her the tale of how Zuko finally stood against his father. And hearing these words, Ru steps forward and tells them about the attack their mother is planning in the morning. We'll be ready for her, thanks, Suki tells her. Ru asks them not to hurt her mother or sister. Will you do me a favor? She finally asks. Will you teach me to chi block? The next morning, Aang stands ready upon the rooftop of the Earthern Fire Refinery. Looking down, he sees the metal walls they erected in a sort of maze. 
On the other side of the square, Li Ling appears with her army of benders. He lands on the ground as Li Ling and her army come forward from the streets of the city, and he stands before them, telling her that he won't allow her to harm anyone else. I have a very simple solution, Avatar. Leave the city and take the non-benders with you. Cranefish Town will become a city of benders only. We deserve a space that belongs to us alone, she tells him. I can't do that, he informs her. Then I'll have to force you out, Li Ling shrugs, stomping the ground, sending a pillar of earth at Aang. But he leaps into the air, using his glider to fly back to the refinery roof. All the benders rush forward, moving through the metal maze. Stay sharp! The Avatar's probably got some traps set up for us in this maze! Someone shouts. They round the corner into a dead end. But when they turn back, another wall suddenly slides into place. Ah! The walls are moving by themselves! Someone screams. But Toph peeks her head over the wall and smiles down at them. Nope, I'm moving them. She opens another wall, revealing Suki and a few of the security guards. They rush forward, lashing out and chi-blocking the benders quickly. Another group of benders continue to move through the maze. They pass a barrel that suddenly explodes with water, quickly freezing them in place. Now stay put, Katara calls to them. Toph continues to run along the walls, laughing as she locks another group of Li Ling's benders in place. This is kind of fun. She giggles. Li Ling looks on as her forces are quickly depleted. Ya Ling, go crush that earthbender, she orders. Her daughter launches herself through the air, clotheslining Toph off the wall and slamming her into the ground. You can't hear me coming if I don't touch the ground, right? Ya Ling smirks. She jumps back into the air as Toph launches an attack. And as the earthbender retaliates, Toph manages to avoid her attacks. You want to fly? Fine, then follow me. Toph shouts as she rushes forward and begins to run up the side of the factory. They both begin to fight on the roof, twisting to avoid each other's attacks. What? Aren't you going to tell me how we can resolve this peacefully? Yaling asks as she swings a club of rock. Toph twists and punches through the club with a stony fist. Nah, that's Aang's thing. I'd rather fight. A group of the benders reach the refinery, kicking in the door. You guys don't want to do this, Sokka calls to them from the other side of the room, boomerang in hand while he stands next to Satoru. He smiles at them, telling them that he is the best chi blocker there is. There's one of him and five of us. We can take him, one of the benders says. You go first then. I didn't sign up to get chi blocked. It really hurts, their leader snaps. Suddenly, Sokka's boomerang cracks her in the back of the head, and she hits the ground. I'm the scariest kind of chi blocker. I can chi block from a distance. Who's next? Sokka says with a smile as he catches his boomerang. With a shout, the benders all rush forward. Aw, I was kind of hoping they'd run away, Sokka pouts. On the rooftop, Toph ducks under another attack and blocks a second with a piece of the metal roof. Inside, Sokka looks up at the commotion as the roof suddenly caves in and Ya Ling plummets to the ground below as Toph lowers herself with a metal line. Huh, these could be useful, she says. The benders continue to rush forward, but Toph merely creates a box to trap them in. Outside, Li Ling realizes that the Avatar knew they were coming and questions how it could have happened. I told them your plan. Rue says, coming up behind her mother. She begins to yell at her mother, telling her that she believed her when she said that the non-benders were a threat. But now, she sees that they did nothing wrong, that they were just trying to live their lives. Everything you've done is horrible. Call off the attack on the Earthern Fire Refinery, Rue orders her mother. No, Li Ling hisses, and Rue launches into an attack, trying to chi block her mother. But Li Ling catches her daughter's fist and throws her to the ground. Did you just try to chi block your mother? I'll bury you, you ungrateful child! Li Ling snaps. Aang looks down and sees Li Ling beginning to bury her daughter beneath the earth and launches himself down towards them. 
Inside, Toph and Ya Ling continue to trade blows, when suddenly, Toph is tripped and falls to the ground. Ya Ling stands over her, a large rock in her hand as she gloats. What a disappointment you are. I can't believe that the so-called greatest earthbender in the world would be so stupid enough to side with a bunch of non-benders. We're better than them, she smirks. But Toph smiles up at her. I'd never be stupid enough to think that I'm better than him just because I'm a bender and he's not, she tells Ya Ling. And as she says that, the boomerang cracks Ya Ling in the back of the head, knocking her out and sending her to the floor. Benders may have incredible abilities, but non-benders have boomerangs, the great equalizer, Sokka tells her. He leans over his friend, making sure that she is okay. I'm fine. Thanks for saving me, Toph tells him, lightly punching him in the arm. Outside, Aang swoops in, knocking Li Ling away with a blast of air and pulling Ru from the ground. But they both look up to see Li Ling standing over them a massive boulder in her hands. She snarls at Aang, telling him that her message will spread and that the benders will start to stand up against the non-benders. Maybe you'll win this battle, but you can't stop the coming war. She hisses at him. At least I can stop you, Aang tells her, and his eyes begin to glow as he enters the Avatar state, rising into the air. With a movement of his hand, the boulder shatters in Li Ling's grasp. He bends a stream of water at her, freezing her in place, and he begins to move towards her. Katara rushes forward, yelling at him to stop, but Ru shouts to Aang to continue. Do it! It's the only way she'll learn! Ru snaps. But before Aang can perform the act, Katara rushes forward, and she tells the Avatar that he needs to do this for the right reasons. Not because it seems like the easy solution, or because you're angry she's hurting people. Make sure you know why you're doing this, Katara tells him. Aang pauses before exiting the Avatar's state and lowering himself to the ground. He looks at Li Ling angrily. I'm going to keep fighting the poison you've spread in Cranefish Town. You're the same as the pollution on the beach, and I'm not leaving until it's cleaned up, he tells her. And with these words, Aang swoops away to help finish the fight. You're a wretched, ungrateful child, Li Ling tells her daughter. Maybe, but you're a terrible mother, Ru nods. Later, Suki and Aang speak with Boss Lao, letting him know that Suki and the rest of the Kyoshi warriors are planning on staying and training a non-bender police force. Aang nods reminding them that they need to find quality benders that are willing to protect the city as well. After everything that's happened, do you really think non-benders and benders can work together to protect the city? Sataru asks. Aang and Suki look at each other. Absolutely, they say in unison. Three days later, Aang and Katara find themselves walking along the docks, and Katara asks Aang why he decided to not take away Li Ling's bending abilities. It was what you said about it being an easy solution. Taking away her bending wouldn't have fixed anything. It wasn't her bending that was the problem. It was her bigotry, Aang tells her. Aang tells Katara that he wants to stay in Cranefish Town for a while. That if they can overcome the problems here, it could become something truly special. I agree. I think this city needs you. Katara tells him as she takes his hand. I think it needs us. Aang smiles at her. They keep walking together, and Aang finally says, I also think this city needs a better name. Katara nods. I'll get Sokka on it right away. And that, my dear listeners, is the conclusion to Avatar The Last Airbender Imbalance Part 3. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon to get the notifications, like the video, and leave a comment down below. If you want to keep supporting Comic Storian, you can go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash comicstorian, where for $2 you get access to early access content, podcasts, and much more. And if you want to find more of me, Dan T. Producer, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dan T. Producer, or on Twitch at Silu91, C-Y-L-O-O-9-1. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time.